Well, thank you, thank you. Uh, wonderful, all the hard work that the Carter family went through to uh, put this event on, to help us all to remember John as, as he was and as he is. John was a tremendous neighbor. I don't know if this thing's working or not. We can hear you. But a uh, few things I have, and I don't have too many to say about. Ryan told me to be sure I keep it clean. So <laughs> Anyways, uh, John and Charlotte were the uh, second family to own the uh, Madeline home. Uh, they purchased the home from the Hayes family. Both families had two children. John would come home from work at Carter Tire, driving the yellow cream uh, Ford pickup. John would go straight home, probably out of beer, <laughs> while Charlotte would stop by the mailbox, and Charlotte would often visit with my wife, Joy, uh, on Fridays several times, I think maybe several times a month, we would end up getting together down at the, uh, the Carter home and uh, share stories and enjoy the week that we've just gone through and uh, maybe have a, a toddy and uh, enjoy their famous hot tub. Many uh, wonderful stories were uh, began and ended at the hot tub. <laughs> when John and Charlotte left for work, Nancy would often walk up the street to visit with our daughter, Kelly. And then the two of them would head off to the bus stop at Charter Oaks. Ryan, being a little bit more um, independent, <laughs> would stay at home and walk to the bus stop by himself. It was interesting the conversations that uh, Kelly and Nancy would have uh, getting ready for school. Kelly was a couple of years older and very worldly, you know, according to Nancy, because she was an older, almost like her big sister. And uh, it was always an honor to, to have Nancy uh, come by. Uh, we were visiting a little bit ago, and uh, there was a remembrance of frequent phone calls home. Mom, can I stay for dinner? And Charlotte would always remind her, you know, you have a home too. <laughs> Summer vacations were a very important part of the Carter family when the children were young. They would spend their vacation time camping, uh, and often it would be with Charlotte's large family. Uh, she has 13? 17. 17 in the family. And uh, they kind of take turns coming up and, and uh, babysitting the kids in the summertime. And so that kind of allowed us to get to know the, uh, the Carter family. John would load up the pickup with all the uh, necessities and uh, maybe a few things more than they really needed. And they would head out for a week's camping. <laughs> Upon returning home, John tirelessly would share stories of the event to, for about two months. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> if you can imagine condensing John's activities in, for a week into just two months of stories. That's a phenomenal job. <laughs> Diamond Lake was a, another place that we used to like to go. Um, we had a boat, and uh, we'd get a cabin up at the lake, and we'd uh, get together with uh, the Acton family, the Carter family, and the Lipsy family, and uh, spend a lot of time on the water and enjoy walking the different trails of, around the lake and having um, many, many good times. 
John was often the uh, center of conversation, igniting stories of uh, previous year's activities. And he would, he would always remember. He must have had a digital mind. Accurate? No. But he could sure remember <laughs> them to keep things going. Brian, you're starting to laugh now a little bit, so you're warming up. John had his infamous workshop where he was famous for building birdhouses, lighthouses, and other contraptions, which he proudly displayed throughout the backyard and on their deck. On a couple of occasions, our two families went down to the coast to share a friend's cabin in the Waldport area. We would walk on the beach searching for driftwood that John could turn into a treasure. We often would end up at the Flounder Tavern following these uh, excursions. <laughs> One of these times, John and I happened to slip over there while the ladies were still out walking, and we said, we'll be back to the cabin in a little bit. It was quite a little bit when the ladies came to the tavern, escorted us out almost by the ear. We went back to the cabin, and dinner that night was cold shoulder and hot lip. <laughs> is no lie. <laughs> John chuckled and I was totally humiliated. <laughs> well, in later years as John's health started to deteriorate, he would keep his friends updated on new health in innovations which uh, OHSU was using to, to keep John alive. Charlotte tirelessly, I don't mean that as a vehicular term, but she tirelessly would work with John, helping John, making sure that he was comfortable and ensuring that his life was as good as possible. Again, the Carter family, we've been close for a long, long time on Madeline, and uh, even after we moved the band and then came back, um, it's been, uh, an honor for us to know you and uh, how you know everybody had a chance to see Ryan and Nancy up here and see the fine young people that they uh, turned into and two responsible, wonderful kids. Thank you. As we celebrate the life of Big John Carter today, let us reflect on the laughter, kindness, patience, and true family man that made John the person that we all love so much. I've known the Carter family for over 34 years, and I'm honored to be speaking today about a man that introduced me to the Oregon Ducks. <laughs> over the years, people would ask me, did you go to Oregon? No, I would say. Then why are you such a big duck fan? I would always say that I just am and always have been. Then, the other day, I realized my introduction to the Oregon Ducks was through Big John. Him and his garage did it to me. <laughs> Even as I speak here today, I am thankful that he was not a Beaver fan. <laughs> say that I've never met a person so friendly and caring in my life as my dad number two growing up, Big John, unknowingly helped me uh, mold me and guide me into the person I am today. I even became a very good listener thanks to Big John. <laughs> and my wife Sarah thanks him too. <laughs> Seriously though, this man loved his family and his family's friends. He didn't have a mean bone in his body and he probably never met a stranger. Over the years, <clears throat> he has given me many stories to consider telling you today. 
but only one stands out in my mind and will for the rest of my life. As 17-year-old idiots, my best friend Ryan and I ended up driving our cars up to a camping party at an undisclosed logging area near Tahiti. <laughs> Basically, we don't know where we were. There were bonfires, loud music, and girls. A terrible combination for any 17-year-old male. At some point, someone had a brilliant idea, as usual, to risk death by doing some racing on logging roads. Now, I had always thought I would drive race cars someday. So my level of confidence was through the roof in my little front wheel drive green tin can Ford Fiesta with ball tires. <laughs> I got in my car. Ryan got in his beloved VW Bug as others got ready in their vehicles. Next thing you know, we're racing through gravel logging roads with nothing but thousand foot canyons surrounding us on either side of the road. I'm almost positive that we actually invented the sport of drifting. <laughs> because our cars were sideways the entire time. We were like pros without a fear in the world. Clearly we thought this through very thoroughly <laughs> before climbing into our cars. At some point, Sean Bauer climbed into Ryan's bug and off they went, literally. As I came around the corner, all I saw were wheels in the air and Ryan and Sean climbing out of the wreckage. They had rolled the bug while trying to make a sharp corner and unbelievably rolled into one of the only areas with a three-foot ditch instead of a thousand-foot drop to nowhere. Luckily, no one was injured and I was able to drive them back to the campsite. After telling the story to everyone at camp, I think it really started to sink in for Ryan that his beloved bug was probably going to have some battle scars once it got out of the ditch. But how do we get it out of the ditch? My memory is a little fuzzy at this point, but somehow I was nominated to drive the 45 minute trip to Ryan's house and tell his dad. <laughs> I know Ryan was probably a little scared, but I think I was probably white as a ghost and getting whiter and whiter every mile I got closer to Big John. I remember going into the driveway and seeing him in the garage. I also remember looking, him looking at me with this very confused look. I stepped out of my car and walked over to him and started to tell him the story in full detail. Next thing you know, I'm in his yellow truck and we are driving out to Taiyi. This was literally the longest ride of my life. I'm not kidding. It was mostly silent, which is good because it gave me plenty of time to consider just how stupid we were. Also of note, this was the first time on record that Big John went without talking for this long. <laughs> Seriously, it is. It was eerie. I know he was scared, relieved, and then mad. As a current dad of a 17-year-old boy, I cannot imagine what he went through that day. <clears throat> we arrived at the campsite, and I remember watching how Big John approached Ryan. He was so thankful that Ryan was okay, and really didn't make too big a deal about the car. We got the bug back on its wheels, and I rode with Ryan in it back to home. From that day forward, the VW and Ryan were known as Tumblebug. I don't remember how or if the VW got fixed. Ryan would have to finish that story for me. For me, Big John stood out that day. He knew we were ashamed. He knew we were happy that Ryan and Sean were uninjured. He knew that the last thing we wanted was to come and get him to bail us out. He knew we were growing up before his eyes, and this was an opportunity to help us evolve into better young men. And we knew he loved us, all of us. Thank you, Ryan, for inviting me to tell this story. Thank you, Carter family, for inviting me into your family with open arms so many years ago. Thank you. Thank you, Big John. <clears throat> for saving us that day. 
for the best 45 minute ride of my life. So 
uh, thanks, John, for teaching me that ironing sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of fond memories spent with the Carters and throughout my life and of John being part of our huge family. His family is so lucky that they had such an extended time with him during his long battle with his health problems. He uh, certainly was a miracle man to be able to have the extended time. You guys made a lot of great memories with that time. And I know it's not easy to lose a dad, to lose a spouse, and all of my love and condolences to all of you. <laughs>